the human body is asymmetrically designed, which favors the right side. And you're going to see how an individual has no ability to use his left side, yet I can use my left side with no problem. And this is really the difference between someone whose right dominance has become problematic and someone whose right dominance, mine, is not problematic because I can still use my left side. My friend, he cannot, not even close, and that's what you're going to see. As you watch me doing the adduction lift test, underneath everything, underneath all this muscular activity that I'm feeling appropriately, my left hamstring, my left adductor, my left glute medius, uh, my left abs and my right glute, all that's doing, this is a test to, to know whether you can lateralize, this is my left side, whether you can take your pelvis from the right stance position over on the right side to the left side and hold that position in a difficult position and breathe. If you cannot, if you can do that, it means that you've inhibited, you've turned off, you've reduced the overactivity of the right neck, of the right abdominal wall, of your left lower back, and of your left hip flexors. Those are the muscles we need to stay or keep inhibited. If we cannot keep them, it's not like they're never gonna work. They should work if you're on your right side, but you should not be using those muscle groups if you're on your left side. And the difference between when I do it and when my friend does it, you're gonna see all he does is use his right side even when he's trying to use his left side. And that is an example of someone who cannot integrate the left side of his body, not because he doesn't have the strength, not because he doesn't have the brains, not because he can't, he, he wouldn't physically be able to do it. His brain has lost connection. His brain, his, the, the right side of his brain that controls the left side of his body is not functioning the same way that the left hemisphere is that's controlling the right side of his body. This is really a hemispheric brain test. Whether you have the ability to lateralize, get over onto your left side, use the left diaphragm to breathe and stabilize in that position. And that's what this test is showing. Find this video interesting, could you uh, share or like or subscribe or leave a nice comment, something like that, that would be helpful. Okay, so here I am. As I raise my left ankle up, that's the left hamstring. As I pick up my left knee, and I'm just gonna point to my left inner thigh and my left glute medius, that's what I'm feeling. Just in that position, I'm feeling those left stance muscles. And then by pushing up, I'm integrating my right glute with my left abs. So I have shifted to the left. I'm able to use my left hamstring. I'm able to feel my left adductor and my left glute medius. And then when I push my, low, my bottom hip up off the table to the level of my friend's shoulder, that's showing that I can integrate my right glute max, my left abs with that left hip musculature. Uh, that's a passing test. And I asked him at the end, I didn't show it, but I asked him, uh, did you feel my right leg pushing down on you? you know, so as I lift my body up, you would expect my right leg to push down hard onto that tester, onto my friend. He said, no, I barely felt it. And that's the huge, that's the key. When he does it, none of this is going to happen, which you're going to see. And his right leg is really tensing up. So as I lift my body up and my right leg is on his shoulder, he barely felt my right leg at all. And that is a huge part of this because sometimes people will be able to get their left hip up, but you just feel their right leg bearing down on you quite strongly. So they're just still not integrated. But again, it's a brain issue, has nothing to do with strength because you're going to see my friend is a lot bigger and stronger than I am. Well, he's not taller. He's just bigger and he's strong. Um, and he's going to fail miserably as you're going to see. So now I'm just trying to walk him through it and I'll let you just hear the All right, so you have a left hamstring. So that's good. Now, can you pick up, can you pick your left knee up off the table? You can't do it without rolling backwards. He's using his neck and his right abdominal wall. That's it. Nothing's working. And you're rolling backwards. Mm, how about now? Eventually he just gives up. rolling backwards. Oh, sorry. So we tried yeah, it a couple times. Uh, well, just to show a picture, this is what it looks like when he's trying to lift his left knee. He is using his right abdominal wall and his right neck because his brain does not understand how to rotate his pelvis to the left. This is my left. He cannot get his pelvis from when he lies down, his pelvis is to the right. He's in right stance. His brain has him oriented to the right. He cannot shift his pelvis to the left and adduct his left leg. He's got nothing. And so what does he do? When he tries to use his left side, he just tries, he just ends up using his right side even more. And that's the key to the, all this. And that's why I don't post a lot of technique videos on this YouTube channel. 
for that exact reason. Because you're not even neutral. I mean, he's not neutral. His testing is not bad, however. He's a former boxer. Uh, he's got a he's getting his PhD in some sort of neurofeedback type of thing. Uh, he's got a master's in, in nutrition. Like, you're not going to find many people smarter than him when it comes to the brain and the body. Yet he still can't do this because he's never done PRI. Uh, so this is not a strength issue. Obviously, he's strong enough. It has nothing to do with strength. It has nothing to do with... He's not in pain, luckily. He's not really... I mean, he has some aches and pains, but he's neurologically, he's pretty loose. His testing is not bad. Oh, he used to box. I don't know if I mentioned he used to box. He's also left-handed. So he has good... He, he, he has good control of both his arms, and he's not hypermobile. And he has nothing going on in his cranium. No vision, no teeth issues. But a lot of people that are watching these videos are not in that situation. They have pathology. Their left hip is completely unstable. Their right lower back ligaments have been, may have been stretched out. They might have jaw or teeth issues that they don't even know is influencing this. They might have visual issues. They might have a huge difference between the two eyes. They might be wearing the wrong prescription. And any of those instances or those circumstances, you're going to be trying to do PRI techniques and you're not going to be able to inhibit. It's not, it's not that you are not, it's not that your left hamstring or your left adductor or your left glute medius can't work. They don't get the opportunity to work because you can't inhibit the overuse of what you see in this video, the right neck and the right abdominal wall. And when he tries to pick his pelvis up, when he tries to lift his left leg, so he's lying like this, so this would be the right side, this would be the left side. We're trying to keep his right side forward a little bit. As he tries to pick his left leg up, his pelvis falls back to the right. So he can, that's the left AIC pattern. When he uses his right abdominal wall, that's the right BC pattern. And when you see his neck doing this, that's the right TMCC pattern. He's wholly dependent upon the right side of his body, even when he's trying to use and isolate the left side. And that's the problem. So this is tough. This is difficult. Postural restoration is not easy. It would be, for me, I can't consciously post a lot of uh, exercise or technique videos knowing that the vast majority of people are going to try to do stuff like this and it's just going to make them, it's just going to, they're just going to be overusing the right side even more without knowing it. So that's why I always say you got to find someone who knows what they're doing. Uh, not through, you know, someone who learns PRI secondhand through a mastermind group or something like that. I see some crazy stuff and people like, oh, I've done PRI and you ask them, you know, what PRI have you done? And it was some through some random online program that wasn't even specifically for them, or they learned it in a mastermind group. I saw that recently. And it's just, it's insane. That's not even remotely close to, to what posture restoration is. So that's why I don't post a lot of videos. I talk more about theory and about neurology, because to do this right, you need, and to do it in a way that's helpful to you. Some people do get lucky, but they're probably not going to be people who have a lot of major issues going on and they might actually have success i've had people come in who've been well the next generally not neutral they, they've come in with sometimes with a neutral pelvis uh just off of the few techniques that i've shown because i'm very sure that the, the techniques that i show are safe in the sense that the chance of them overusing their right neck or their right abdominal wall to such an extent that they make those areas even tighter or their left lower back is, is not really an issue. It's that the, the techniques are so basic that the chances that they're really gonna really overuse the wrong areas are pretty slim. But a lot of the stuff you see online are techniques that are way too hard for the average person. Not consciously, because he wouldn't, he didn't think that was gonna be difficult. I guarantee it. He didn't think, it looked so simple. People are so amazed by the subtlety and the difficulty of even the 90-90 position to do it correctly and sense the appropriate things, the left heel, the right arch, the left lower back staying flat, airflow into the appropriate part of the rib cage, blowing up a balloon at the same time, getting all the air out. There are so many things, little details that no one, the average person, and even you know someone who's been doing PRI for five years, they still know, well, I hope they know, uh, that they're just trying to keep their head above water. They don't know the big picture yet. Uh, I mean, some, I can't say that, but there's kind of like a five year, the first five years, you're just trying to, you're just trying to survive in the PRI world. You know, you need to know it, but there's so many different things going on that you're, you're struggling to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. Uh, so this stuff is tough. I just wanted to show what success looked like compared to failure, not because he wouldn't be able to do it. Could I get him to do what I did? 
two or three sessions, three sessions at the most. Why? Because again, he's not heavily patterned. His, his testing's not that bad. His brain just doesn't know how to use the left side of his body and integrate it with the right side of his body. Simple. He has no issues in his cranium. He's not hypermobile. Uh, those are the three biggest that hold people back.